Lord Ara Darzi says, anti-vaxxers are a global menace who must be defeated. Now, we'll get to who Lord Ara Darzi is in a moment. But at the outset, for the millionth time censors, I'm not anti-vaccine. I'm anti-mandate and I'm pro-informed consent on what I'm being encouraged, told, coerced, or asked to put into my body. Now, in case you didn't know, it's over when they say it's over. The Times UK ran an op-ed Wednesday headlined, Anti-vaxxers are a global menace who must be defeated. Greater than the threat of nuclear annihilation, folks? Hmm, I guess so. So what prompted the author to arrive at this terrifying conclusion? Well, it's the fact that, as the author notes, 6.1% of British folks are completely unvaccinated. Not completely vaccinated. Which means not the first two injections, which would make you partly vaccinated. Yes, it's as catastrophic as that. Don't tell the author, though, that 20% of the folks in the U.S. aren't completely vaccinated either. And Africa? Hey, stay away from that one. The positioning for the op-ed is that, as you know, the new and improved boosters are here to eternity and beyond. But for some reason, they're not exactly flying off the pharmaceutical dealer's shelves. In fact, you could say we have a failure to inject. They're being tossed by pharmacies into the circular bin of history as they expire. On the plus side, though, makes sense to get rid of the evidence, huh, Pfizer? Oop, I'm sorry, a life-saving product that's expired. And on cue, as if you didn't know it, the fear-mongering begins. Now, given how well the experts have performed over the past two-plus years, I would say skepticism is the order of the day not to mention questioning the motivations of the authors of these types of op-eds and papers. Now, according to his own bio, Lord Ara Darzi is an Iranian-British surgeon, academic, and politician. Hear, hear. His lordship is an academic surgeon who haunts the surgical department over at the Imperial College of London. Now, for those of you having deja vu, Imperial College... Man, that sounds awfully familiar. Yes, that's the same college where Neil Ferguson worked, another expert loser who falsely modeled an influential COVID apocalypse. Actually, he's modeled a few. You can look into that. Publicly proclaimed the benefits of the draconian lockdowns in the UK, but was caught breaking said lockdowns in order to shag his girlfriend while at the same time being married. Whoops. Aren't you glad that the Imperial College set such high standards? If they didn't, why any old grifter or degenerate could be a member? According to Mr. Darcy, the high hypocrite, sorry, Flyers of Society will be meeting in Qatar this week. Now, they're always meeting somewhere, hey? To draft a report that will urge the UN to create a task force to respond to the growing threat. Specifically, the growing threat of the anti-vaccine, anti-science movement, which, according to Mr. Darcy, has become a global menace. You mean in addition to the experts, right? Mr. Darcy, who's never wrong, just ask him, seems most concerned about the pernicious impact of organized disinformation. Organized disinformation. That's what we used to call an opinion, right folks? I wonder who he could be referring to in those comments. Darcy fretted about the loss of trust in officials. For a smart guy, he's awfully dumb. And concluded the solution requires credible, trusted information clearly communicated, which I'm sure Mr. Darcy will do so. Three guesses, anyone, as to what the report's going to advise the UN. Like shooting fish in a barrel. Pretty damn easy. Why is it that the auto response of experts today, unlike the ones of yesteryear, is not to allow us to debate them, but simply to shut everyone up and anyone who disagrees with them? Now, I would think that if I was an expert who thought that I truly had the best ideas and solutions and was the smartest guy in the room, why would I shit my pants at the thought of debating some high school graduate when it comes to my COVID models? Mr. Darcy, 
Do you believe that calling people a menace will make them trust you more? If so, for a smart guy, sir, you're pretty much a dipwad. Two final thoughts. First, in keeping with follow the money, I would like to see a statement of disclosure of interest. Who is paying Hair Doctor to write this op-ed, even indirectly? Which large pharma companies is Darcy rolling around in the hay with? Lastly, Mr. Darcy is the poster child for the adage, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely, uh, penned by another lord, Lord Acton. These folks at all levels are drunk with their recent COVID powers and are fighting tooth and nail to hold on to them. Their aim now is to pull off a gluable coup of the peasants. That's us, in case you didn't know, folks. What we need to remind Mr. Darcy is that throughout all human history, the role of experts was only to advise. They put forth their ideas and opinions, but were never seen as having holy license of truth and facts. They were never seen as demigods beyond reproach, reproach and question by us mere mortals. Mr. Darcy, on one point, you and I are in total agreement, sir. There is a global menace that needs to be defeated. It's you and your ilk, the elitist experts. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Please post any comments you have in the comment section. You can also follow me on my Rumble on my Locals account, and I will see you next time.